What's good YouTube? Welcome to another Small James Coding tutorial where today we're going to be talking about Tailwind CSS. I learned it in a day and you totally can too. And it's an absolutely massive asset for all your projects. You'll totally love it and it looks good on a CV as well. So without further ado, let's look at how we can achieve this or how I achieved this. So disclaimer for this video, you will need a little bit of CSS cascading style sheets knowledge prior to just picking up Tailwind. But once you have it, it's super excellent. And the first thing you need to know about integrating it in with your life and everything is how to initialize a project with Tailwind CSS in it. Now in this particular case, and for this example, I'm going to be using a Svelte kit project. However, fortunately, Tailwind is a thousand steps ahead of all of us, and they have got a page specific to basically every front end framework you could possibly want to use and how you can configure Tailwind to work within that particular project. So, you know, all I did here was I type in Svelte Tailwind CSS into Google. It's the first thing that comes up. I could do the same with React. It's the first thing that comes up and you can just go in here and follow through their instructions. They're super clear. You cannot go wrong. And then you'll be able to start using these utility classes in your React project and have the corresponding styles display onto your screen. So now that we have configured Tailwind CSS to work inside of our project. Here I have my Svelte project that we're going to be building and currently this is what is displayed on the screen. Now these are all default styles and what Tailwind will do is when you configure Tailwind to work within your project it will strip your project of any default styling. So this is all essentially like a baseline and now if you're not already familiar the way Tailwind works is you can come into an element add a class as you traditionally would for a CSS sheet and instead of having a CSS sheet and, you know, defining your classes and connecting your classes with, with the actual elements in your document, you can just go ahead and write flex for a display of flex, padding of four, and maybe a margin top of 20. And just like that, as we can see, our CSS styles get applied into this document. Now, that's all well and good, but how do you learn it so quickly? Well, once again, Tailwind have gone and made our lives incredibly easy by thinking a thousand steps into the future. If we come over to Tailwind documentation here, let's say we make this page a little bit bigger, this quick search feature and their documentation should be your Bible. They make it so incredibly easy, it's not even funny. And so suddenly in here, let's say I wanted to just wrap my, div, my form inside of a div here. Now what I can do is say, you know, let's say I wanted to set the minimum height of this particular div. I could just say min height like I would, you know, into my CSS class as I would type it out. And it here has all of the utility classes that you would use along with the CSS as you would traditionally write it out. And so in this particular case, I'm looking to set the min height to 100% of the view height. And so I can just go ahead and say class min height screen just like that and let's say i wanted to set the background to green i can just say background like that come into here backgrounds in this particular case i'm looking for background color and so now i know i can choose from any of these predefined color palettes that they have there's heaps of them so you know in this particular case i could go amber 500 so i would just type in background amber 500 separating my utility classes by a single space and now when I come back into my application, we can see that it has indeed taken up the entire screen and the background is Amber. Now, the reason this system is so effective is because it takes two minutes to learn how the system works. So in this particular case, we've seen that the background is used to refer to a background and the color is the color and, you know, 400 defines the intensity of the color. Now, text green 300 or 400 you see that it's the same format and the formats are very consistent. You know, if I wanted to add padding of 10, it's just padding of 10 like that. If I wanted to make it a flex display and flex column, and let's say I forgot how to set a gap, I can say gap. And in this particular case, it tells me that I can set either a generalized gap or a distinct gap in the vertical or horizontal planes. And so just by quickly styling even one component you will very immediately start to pick up on the trends that 
tail when used to define their classes or the schematics and you'll have to lock them up less and less it's like a downtime of maybe 30 minutes where it's a bit jittery at the start where you're coming in here and you're okay okay how do i set padding top and you know the answer is right there padding top of six now i should mention that you can also include custom sizes so you don't have to use all of their predefined sizes and they actually tell you how to do it right here essentially and so in this particular case, let's say I wanted to set a default padding instead of one of their pre-selected sizes. I can just use a square bracket and enter my custom size. So I could go 132 rem, which is going to be huge. And as you can see, it just totally destroys our application. Equally, I could make it 5 rem. It's probably more realistic. And if I just made that 25, it appears down in the center of our screen. So the moral of the story is that for 90% of the functionality of Tailwind, just having their documentation over once you've configured it inside of your project will mean that you are writing out your applications and styling them infinitely faster than using a traditional CSS or modular CSS sheet system. It's so easy to add the custom classes and you can even combine regular custom CSS with Tailwind by putting a curly parentheses around the outside, separating your CSS or your Tailwind classes from one another with a space, and just appending styles. Let's say we imported a style sheet and it was called styles, and I could just say styles dot main div like that. And now if I had that sheet defined, both these styles would be applied. The combination of my tailwind and my regular css sheet configuration and this means it's really great for migrating between one platform to another because you don't have to strip everything you can just slowly migrate from one to the other and use them both interchangeably when required equally i could actually come back in here and add a dynamic style and so let's say in this particular case and this is the same in react except the only difference would be that this is a class name I could say, let's say I have a boolean or like it's a dark mode. If dark is true, I can have background black, just like this, or my favorite is like slate 900, text white. And if it's not, I can set the text to slate 900 and the background to white. And so just with this small configuration, I can add a boolean into my tailwind styling just like that. And once again, it's just super easy to configure the whole system. Now, as I mentioned, that's 90% of the functionality of Tailwind that you'll be able to gain within a day of using it. Super easy to pick up. However, there are some more complicated elements that you'll either have to take the time to stumble on, or if you stay tuned for my follow-up video, we're just gonna cover all of the essential but slightly more complicated advanced features of Tailwind just to really maximize your output with this amazing system. So stay tuned for that. And if the video is already out, the link will be in the description down below. But yeah, moral of the story, my friends, is that this is how I learned in one day. All it took was a little bit of effort from my side, but for anyone else learning, it's even easier. Honestly, as soon as you've learned how to configure it into one of your projects, just using this documentation, it has everything you could possibly want. Font style, you could go font size. You could... You can see all of it here. You can see rounded, you can use the breakpoints. Uh, it's amazing for responsive design, particularly if you use the design pattern of mobile first and then desktop sizes later, so sizing up. Absolutely excellent breakpoint system. Same for the hover, same for pseudo effects, same for group hover effects. They have everything covered. So yeah, stay tuned for the follow-up video. If you have enjoyed this one, learn something. I hope I've managed to motivate you to incorporate it into your daily life leave a like, sub, and comment down below for what you'd like me to do next. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.